Sparkfun has released a new board assembly service called a la carte, or ALC for short. Rather than just being another PCB assembly shop, Sparkfun has created a tool that will auto-generate boards for you. Let's take a look. Head to alc.sparkfun.com and click the Get Started button. I definitely recommend giving your project a name, as that will help you track it later, say, on your receipt when you order the board. The first thing you will be asked is to add a microcontroller. You've got a few options here, and I'm sure that Sparkfun will add more later. For the demo, let's say I want to make an IoT node using an ESP32, and I want to test it with a number of different sensors. So I'll add an ESP32 room module. Next, let's head over to the Components tab, where you should see a list of available components to put on your board. If you can't find something, you can use the search function to help you find components within that tab, or you could use the global search to find any component by name. These components will be automatically connected to the microcontroller when you have the board produced, so no need to worry about routing traces. I'll start by adding a 5-way joystick, which is a compact way to get 5 different user buttons in a single package. I'd like to try out the BME680 and compare the type of data I get to the CCS811, so I'll add both of those. Part of my IoT sensor node will be reporting its position and time, so let's add a GPS receiver as well. I'll throw a small prototyping area on there in case I need to make a few connections to other parts. It looks like I can add a quick connector, which will be very helpful in testing other sensors that have their own quick breakout boards. In outputs, I'll add an LCD so I can watch the sensor readings on the device itself. I also like putting simple LEDs as status indicators when I don't have LCDs or a serial connection, so I'll put one of those on there. There's a transceiver section if you'd like to check out other communication options. The ESP32 comes with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so I don't think I need to add anything from here. In connectors, there are a number of options that let me attach wires and other electronics to my board. Screw and latch terminals are great for quick connect wires, but I'm just going to go with a regular header here. I want to break out some of the GPIO and communication lines on the ESP32, so I'll go with a 10-pin header. When we select the connector, we'll be given a list of connections to make with the microcontroller. I'll connect the first two pins to 3.3 volts and ground. Next, let's break out a SPI port, which is MISO, MOSI, and Serial Clock. Then, I'll add a UART port to help with debugging, and finally, I'll add the I2C port. To figure out what to connect the last pin to, it can be helpful to look at a pinout diagram of the ESP32 module. Here, I can see that GPIO25 can be used as a digital-to-analog converter or an analog-to-digital converter. So, let's connect the final pin of the header to IO25. That should give us a lot of options on this prototyping board. Click Add to Project, and the component list should be updated. If you need to delete something from the component list, you can simply click the X button by that component's name, and it will be removed from the project. Next, let's head to the Power tab. You have a number of options for power connections. It looks like my board will come with a USB-C connector by default, which will give me a way to power the board as well as upload and debug code. That being said, let's also add a battery power block so I can test my project with a LiPo battery. At the bottom of the component list, you can see that I'm given a power budget, which estimates the amount of current all of the components will draw. It looks to be a pretty conservative estimate, but it's helpful nonetheless. I'm done with adding components that I want for my prototype, so now is a good time to review the board size. I'm locked into a rectangle shape, but there's some flexibility with the size. By clicking on one of the X or Y options, I can edit that dimension and the other will adjust as necessary to keep all the components on the board. Obviously, I can't make any one dimension too small or the tool will throw an error. I'll keep the standoff holes on my project as I do find them useful to either mount the board or add standoffs to elevate the board off my workbench. If I have more than one connector, I can click Group Connectors, which will cause the tool to put all the connectors on one side of the board. Note that you often need to make the board bigger to allow for this. I don't need it for my board, so I'll leave it disabled. I'd like to have the LCD on top with all the components underneath it, so I'll make X just big enough for the LCD. I think this looks pretty good. Before heading to the ordering page, let's talk about saving progress in case you need to come back to a design. Your project should be automatically saved during the process, so don't worry about trying to find a save button. Click on My Projects and you should see a list of projects that you've created. 
you can resume working on any project that you've started, and you can clone any project to use it as a starting point. Note that once you've added a project to cart, meaning you clicked the proceed to checkout button, the project will be forever locked. You can clone it, but you won't be able to make changes to that project again. Let's go back to the IoT project I was working on and head to checkout. At this point, the project is put into your SparkFun shopping cart where you can add other components that you might need, like USB cables or batteries. Note that there is a one-time design and tooling fee that SparkFun charges to produce your board, but you can order multiple copies of the same board if you wish. If you'd like to reorder the same board later, you can contact support at sparkfun.com with your order information, and they'll waive the design fee for up to 18 months after the initial order. If you're wondering why you might use the ALC service, know that it can be a huge time saver when it comes to board creation. The design fee might come as a shock if you've never used another assembly service before, but I urge you to compare it to what it would cost to pay yourself or another engineer to do layout. I could see this being useful for very quickly creating prototypes to give to your team, or maybe making some sensor nodes to test out your new IoT service. Note that you can reach out to SparkFun's support team to order the Eagle board and schematic files for your design. You can then modify the design or send these files off to another manufacturer for higher quantity runs for, say, a production run. If you find that you're stuck, you can click the Help button to head to the Frequently Asked Questions page. This is a good place to start to see if SparkFun has answered your question, like how long the process takes, and if the boards are Rojas compliant. If you can't find what you're looking for in the FAQ, head over to forum.sparkfun.com where you can ask questions in the ALC section. I hope this has helped give you some ideas on how you can use SparkFun's new board design service. If you don't know PCB layout software, or looking to create some prototypes very quickly, or maybe you just want to save some time, I recommend checking it out. Happy hacking! <laughs>